I will continue to kick this evil doctrine as long as I live and breathe because it has pervaded and infected people online and they're going to be the ones who will rise on the ladder and these are Calvinists they're very they're attracting a lot of people to their videos the reason why is because of their intellectual ability apologetics and also the way that they deal with people of different religions however the Calvinists they teach a wrong doctrine and that is the doctrine of Calvinism so I'm going to expose what is some of their wrong doctrines now the one of the most disappointing things that ever happened to me was that James White he got so I could tell he was very very offended by the video that I did exposing Calvinism what's amazing is that I didn't even title his name in my video and then all of a sudden a couple days later he just posted it on his uh, on a social network and then put me on his front page in his Radio Free Geneva and it's like is I'm, I'm just wondering you know it's like man he must have been trolling me so the Calvinists which is no surprise we've been getting emails and some people trolling inside the church of Calvinists or people who are influenced by James White's system so I mean they're just trolling these guys are trolls they got nothing better to do in life because all they like to do is watch stuff online and then study 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 Amen. they don't stand up for Jesus go out and do something for the Lord so because of that what was sorely disappointing to me though was that I was finally hoping because he did a few videos on me but all of them was not any type of argument nope. and any video that I responded to he didn't respond back so I was hoping this one because Calvinism is his forte I was so hopeful and one of the brethren was with me as my witness I was like <laughs> let's watch it together and I'm hoping he has really good legitimate arguments I'm serious I'm serious that's what makes me grow more in knowledge actually is if my opponent finally has a good argument and good night nurse <laughs> that guy all he did was just mock me yeah. that's all he did and then he was mocking the Textus Receptus manuscripts that the King James Bible came from nothing to do with Calvinism the most <laughs> idiotic thing that I ever saw which made me laugh even more was that every time that I would criticize him that he'd always laugh about it and criticize back I'm like we're not getting into an intellectual argument right here and what he was trying to pretend was that he was trying to pretend I was not bringing up intellectual arguments he was trying to point out that all I did was being sarcastic doing name calling so because of that this guy he doesn't know what he's talking about he's got weak apologetics he got weak intellectual skills but he didn't address the arguments that I brought up and that's what sorely disappointed me so his tactic which is very obvious is that if he's cornered on something he'll laugh it off uh -huh. or talk down on you that's a sign of his cowardice actually Amen. not only that that's something that I mean I studied in psychology at graduate school and stuff like that these are things where these people is a psychological mental issue where, where when they're making fun of you for oh the guy is not being intellectual using ad hominem arguments and being criticizing when the person talks like that he's actually talking about himself that's a real cycle that's a genuine psychological problem right there okay but anyways it was very disappointing to me that the only when he included all my argument what he did was this he put it <laughs> he said there's so much to cover over here so I'm like okay so let's cover it and break it down what he meant by that was in a sarcastic way he put me teaching this in a fast forward motion while playing his uh, godly rock music a mighty fortress is our god <laughs> like that while me talking in fast forward motion the whole thing and then I was like okay so maybe he'll have an argument after that right no he didn't he just complained about me that's it so I was sorely disappointed all right so let's cover some Calvinist arguments over here <coughs> 2nd Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13 by the way if you want to pay attention to me how I criticize you guys more than the arguments that I bring up hey man that's on you yep. you just want to be entertained right. you act you guys actually don't want to face an intellectual issue right. and break this down step by step okay 2nd Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13 let's cover these so here is one Calvinist passage right over here in 2nd Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13 
And you know what I'm going to kick on? Th this idea where they demand regeneration of the Holy Spirit first in order for you to believe after that. Now remember, Calvinists believe that people do not have free will. So if you're a lost person, you do not have the free will to believe in Jesus Christ. They're saying that you're unable to. That's what they want to focus on. Some of them will probably say, I'm not saying all, but some of them will probably say that we're not saying that God forces them not to believe. It's just that they're unable to. So that's what they'll try. some of them will probably argue. Well, whoop-de-doo, okay? Good argument. Whoop-de-doo. So because they're unable to believe in Jesus Christ, what God has to do, all right, my signature, my signature drawing, right? So then all of a sudden, God, he's going to have to go up to heaven all of a sudden, you know, point out in some way, he's going to have to force it out in some way that, okay, so I'm going to make you believe. So then what he has to do, he has to regenerate them. So all of a sudden, do, 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 and then, oh, then this becomes able, and I believe. So basically, God has to go like this. And then the person goes, oh, I believe, I believe. That's what the Calvinists teach is that he has to regenerate within us so the person can believe because they're unable to. So God has to make them able to get the ability to do so. Okay, so let's look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning... <clears throat> chosen you to salvation. So notice how God chose these people to be saved. So it's not of their free choice. Notice that God chose them before what? You'll notice uh, according to their verse, it's like a long time ago from the beginning. So at the beginning, God chose you. So you didn't choose him. God chose you. So that's how Calvinists will argue. God chose you to get saved. You didn't have the free choice. When God chose you to salvation through, notice right here, sanctification of the Spirit. <clears throat> so they argue here, the Holy Spirit, see, had to sanctify, had to work within, regenerate, do this little dark circle first so that they can believe. Because notice it's sanctification of the Spirit and what? Belief of the truth. So belief comes afterward. That's what they'll say. Now, in his childish way of criticizing me and debunking Calvinism, he says, I'm so, you know, he, he made fun of my name and then my protege, Jeff Durbin's name, and then he didn't make fun of Apologia Studios, you know, so at least he didn't make fun of that name. You're right, but I'll make fun of your channel, Radio Free Gehenna, that's what you did, you know, with, with the going fast forward mode. So anyway, in his Radio Free Gehenna, he tries to put all this childish, uh, criticism against yours truly, and I'm kind of wondering what he's going to do now to argue against this. But these Calvinists, this is the kind of verses that they'll pull up, see, is that there has to be some kind of working of the Spirit first, and then you can believe after that. But this passage did not say sanctification of the Spirit first, then you believe. It says sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. That's what we believe they happen at the same time. That's what we believe. They're together. Look at John chapter 3, verse 8 through 15. John chapter 3, verses 8 through 15. Notice right here that when the Holy Spirit enters in you, regenerates within you, this happens together when you believe on Jesus Christ for salvation. Look at John chapter 3, and then we'll read verse 18. Uh, excuse me, verse 8. The Bible says, The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. See that? There's your working of the Holy Spirit. Now, notice what Nicodemus says. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know and testify that we have seen and ye receive our witness. Uh, excuse me, uh, that we do know and testify that we have seen and ye receive not our witness. Verse 12, if I have told you earthly things and ye believe not, how shall 
ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So notice right here, Jesus Christ explains John 3, 8 about the working of the Holy Spirit. Nicodemus says how, and Jesus explains and answers it at verse 10 through 15. He gives the gospel of concerning what? His death, and then that they could believe on it. See that? Let's also go to Ephesians 1, 13. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13. This one goes even further. Notice right here that it's first. It's first that you believed on Jesus Christ for salvation. That's why the Holy Spirit can start working after that. So Ephesians 1.13 is even more specific. Look at this. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 that the process is this first. Now, let's see here. Notice this is first. And then after that, then you get this. Okay? The Bible says right here, in whom ye also trusted. See, you trusted, you believed. When? After that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. See, after you hear the gospel, then you trust. In whom also, when? After that ye believed. See, after you believe, then what? Ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. See that? Then, see that? The Holy Spirit can start working within you. Okay, let's also look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Now, if these Calvinists don't believe me and they whine and cry about, you're saying that we're trolling you, watch as soon as this video get posted, I wonder. I wonder. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and then we'll read verse 14. Some of these Calvinists said, the very idea that this guy, he has to put in his title, thank you Calvinist trolls for building up my views. This guy wants attention from us. This guy wants attention from us. Uh, surprisingly, I think you guys are the ones that want attention from me because you guys are the ones trolling me. You guys are the ones that are watching me for crying out loud. <laughs> it's so weird. The reason why I did that was to aggravate you guys because you guys just keep trolling us all, all the stinking time, man. All right, <coughs> 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto them, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So notice right here, Calvinists are going to argue that, see, unbelievers, a natural man, a natural, ordinary, average man. See, he's not a spiritual, saved person. That he is unable. See that? Unable. He is unable to understand spiritual things unless the Holy Spirit, see that? This thing happens first. Then he can understand spiritual things. So then, in order for this person to understand the spiritual gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, God has to start doing first, and then this person can understand the spiritual gospel and get saved in the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's how they're going to answer. But look at the context. They don't read the context. All right, so in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, to debunk this, you got to look at verse 10. Verse 10. It's the deep things of God. That's the context, verse 10. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the what? Deep. Deep things of God. That is so true. Unless the Holy Spirit grows within you. That's why this pastor keeps arguing that, hey, you got to start with the milk. You got to grow in the Spirit first. Then you can understand these deep things, these deep doctrines. Fortunately, that's the problem with a lot of onlineers. They seek the deep things first, not the basics first. Not attending a local church and growing in the Christian life first. Unless you do that first, then you can understand and nourish the deep things more. So it's the deep things. That's completely different from believing in Christ for salvation. Look at Matthew chapter 17. As a matter of fact, believing in Christ for salvation is not deep. What do you mean it's deep? Even a little child, that's the idea. Look at Matthew chapter 17. The very idea, man. 
Look at Matthew chapter 17 and we'll read verse 20. Notice how your faith is given. It's not something that requires so much of God the Holy Spirit to go within you and make you understand the deep complicated things. And then Paul Washer has to interrogate you that you're not really saved because you really don't understand the gospel for crying out loud. For crying out loud, you don't have to know every single detail of the gospel. Amen. It's simple childlike faith. Amen. Look at Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a what? Grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Look at Mark chapter 10, verse 15. Mark chapter 10. And then we'll read verse 15. Now notice right here how the gospel is very simplified. But see these Calvinists, you notice right here, they have an elitist mindset. I'm the special chosen one of God who's saved. You're not. They interrogate people's salvation. You're not really saved. You're not really saved because I don't see fruits in your life. Oh, and you're showing off to me that you're a fruitful person? Yeah. Come on, come on. Come on. Look at Mark chapter 10, verse 15. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a what? Little child. He shall not enter therein. Look at Acts chapter 10, verse 43 now. Acts chapter 10, verse 43. That's why it makes sense if it's going to be as simple as childlike faith, that truly means whosoever, anybody, can receive and believe Christ for salvation. That makes so much sense now. Look at Acts chapter 10, and then we'll read verse 43. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever, it didn't say the elect, it didn't say the special chosen ones, Whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. See that? So anybody, it's not a special part of the elect. 